Hi! You know, when the weather gets like this in some parts of the country, folks hole up and they don't come out again till spring. But not here in St. Paul. Here we celebrate winter. It's called the St. Paul Winter Carnival, and we've been doing it for over 100 years. From grueling dog sled races to magical ice palaces under siege, carnival activities have enlivened the long, cold season and brought residents and visitors outside to enjoy the frigid charms of Minnesota in winter. The Minnesota Historical Society has documented the carnival from its earliest days, compiling a fascinating mix of items showing how this event has evolved over the years. Photograph and visual collections document the succession of ice palaces, as well as the various organizations whose costumes and trappings add color to the many parades and ceremonies. Here also are portraits of carnival royalty and examples of advertising posters and flyers. The Historical Society's manuscript holdings contain some interesting descriptions of winter carnival activities from participants. Among these are the diaries of Michael J. Boyle. Boyle, the son of Irish immigrants, was born in Pennsylvania in 1856, and after working some years as a surveyor, he moved to St. Paul in the 1870s, where he went to work as a clerk in a dry goods firm of Auerbach, Finch, Culbertson & Company. Among his many social activities, Mr. Boyle was a member of the Nushka Club, a lively group of men and women who spent the winter days tobogganing and the evenings partying. Not surprisingly, the Nushkas were avid participants in the early years of the Winter Carnival. In his diary entry for January 20th, 1887, Boyle describes some of the highlights. Tonight, the King of Fire invested the dwelling place of Borealis with a large invading force. The attack was a savage one, but His Fiery Majesty was finally repulsed. The Nushkas were assigned to the defense, and we had as our guests the Makwa Toboggan Club of Minneapolis. Being under the walls, we could see but little of the pyrotechnic display. The action and din of the mini-battle was quite exciting. We entertained the Makwas at Grohl's after the storming a sandwich and beer lunch supplemented by songs and speeches. There was much hilarity and expression of good fellowship. We escorted them to the depot about 11 o'clock. An hour later, I took myself away from a crowd at the Ryan who were evidently bent on making a night of it. Boyle noted in his entry for the following day that these activities had taken something of a toll on his work life. My record for punctuality, he noted, has been a bad one this week. The Ice Palace was a central feature of early carnivals. Even when melting, the structures attracted public attention. Insurance and financial issues took them out of the picture for much of the 20th century, but they enjoyed a glorious, if brief, revival towards the end of the past century with appearances at Lake Phelan, Harriet Island, and downtown. Parades are the one feature of the carnival that has endured since its earliest days. Society's collections include examples of many marching uniforms from the various clubs and business-sponsored marching groups that participated over the years, adding much to the color of the event. This fleece cardigan-style jacket was worn as part of the Riverview Commercial Club group in 1937. This winter carnival uniform of royal blue was part of the Empire Bank Group worn by Russell H. Johnson in 1940. This is a classic Hudson Bay blanket type uniform with a great northern marching group patch that was worn by Louis Hill himself, one of the founders of the carnival in the year 1917. In the 20th century, both amateur and professional filmmakers documented the carnival, including this early Kodachrome film made for the Great Northern Railway in 1942. The event was held on an unusually warm day, but the parade already reflects America's entry into World War II with its floats and military marching units. These are just a few examples, the tip of the ice palace, if you will, of the Minnesota Historical Society's Winter Carnival Collections. I'm Hamp Smith, Reference Librarian, Minnesota Historical Society Library.